In this video, we're learning about the four main factors that affect enzyme action. So that's temperature, pH, substrate concentration, and then also enzyme concentration. Okay, so let's bring in those four factors again and start by looking at temperature. As temperature increases, molecules gain kinetic energy and so move faster. This means they collide more frequently and so form more enzyme substrate complexes. As a result, this increases the rate of reaction, which you can see on this first part of the graph, showing temperature against the rate of reaction. If you then increase the temperature a little more, you reach a sweet spot called the optimum temperature, which is this peak on our graph here. The optimum temperature is the temperature at which an enzyme is most efficient and so gives the maximum rate of reaction. Above the optimum temperature though, so from this point onwards, the enzymes start to denature. This happens when excessive kinetic energy breaks bonds and causes enzymes to begin to lose their shape. And when the active sites change shape, they can't bind to substrates anymore. So fewer enzyme substrate complexes form and one by one, the enzymes gradually stop working. Overall, this decreases the rate of reaction until there are no functional enzymes left. Now we can describe the impact of temperature using something called the temperature coefficient, also known as Q10. And Q10 is basically just a measure of how the rate of reaction changes with a 10 degree rise in temperature. The formula we use to calculate Q10 is Q10 equals R2 divided by R1, where R1 is the reaction rate at the original temperature, and R2 is the reaction rate at a temperature 10 degrees higher. Let's do a quick worked example to show how this works. Given that at 20 degrees, the rate of reaction is two products made per minute, and at 30 degrees, the rate of reaction is four products made per minute, calculate Q10. First, let's grab our equation and then plug in our values. So we get Q10 equals four divided by two. This obviously equals two, and this tells us that the reaction rate is two times faster after the 10 degree increase in temperature. Next up, let's look at how pH affects enzyme catalyzed reactions, this time using a graph of pH versus rate of reaction. Now, just like for temperature, each enzyme has an optimum pH. Below the optimum pH, especially at low pH in acidic conditions, there are lots of hydrogen ions, which remember are H+. And because these H plus ions can disrupt the bonds in the enzymes, when there are lots of them about, the active sites change shape and the enzymes start to denature. The enzymes then can't bind to substrates, so fewer enzyme substrate complexes form and gradually the enzymes stop working. Overall, this continually decreases the rate of reaction as we get closer to zero pH until there are no functional enzymes left. On our graph, we can see the rate of reaction decreases as the pH drops below the optimum. Then, when the pH increases to the enzyme's optimum pH, which is the pH at which the enzyme is most efficient, we get the maximum rate of reaction. On our graph, it's the peak at this point here. Then above the optimum pH, the same thing happens as when the pH is too low, but this time for different reasons. At a high pH, the conditions are alkaline, meaning there are lots of hydroxide ions, so OH- ions, floating about. These hydroxide ions also disrupt the bonds in the enzymes, and when those bonds are broken, the enzymes denature, fewer enzyme substrate complexes form, and once again, this decreases the rate of reaction as the pH increases further. On our graph, we can see that the rate of reaction starts decreasing as soon as the pH rises above the optimum. Moving on to substrate concentration, let's look at how this impacts these reactions using a graph of substrate concentration against rate of reaction. As substrate concentration increases initially, 
there are more substrate molecules available, and so there are more collisions between these substrates and the enzyme's active sites. This means more enzyme substrate complexes form, and so more product forms over the same period of time. This then means the rate of reaction increases, and we can see that in this part of our graph here. This increase in rate only continues until this point though. After this, the rate of reaction plateaus, or levels off, and we call this the saturation point. The rate doesn't increase anymore, even if we have more substrate, because all the active sites are already occupied. At this point, the enzyme concentration becomes the limiting factor. And this just means it's the factor that's preventing the reaction rates from increasing any further. In other words, to increase the rate of reaction now, we need to add more enzymes instead. So to wrap up, let's go over how enzyme concentration affects these reactions. And as before, we'll do it using a graph of enzyme concentration against the rate of reaction. As enzyme concentration increases, there are more active sites available for the substrate molecules to bind to. As a result, there are more collisions between these substrates and the enzyme's active sites, more enzyme substrate complexes form, more products form over time, and so the rate of reaction increases. On our graph, that's shown by this region here. But just like with substrate concentration, this effect only continues up to this point here, where the rate of reaction plateaus. At this point, the rate doesn't increase anymore, even if we add more enzymes. And that's because every substrate molecule is already being worked on by an enzyme. At this point then, the substrate concentration becomes the limiting factor. And to increase the rate of reaction any further, we would need to add more substrate instead. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions and past papers and we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next so sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on youtube